It's your girl Rihanna back with another video. So your girl needs a new pair of point shoes and I thought why not show you guys the process of me sewing my point shoes and breaking them in and also how I make my perfect fit point toe pads. If you guys didn't know, I am an ambassador for perfect fit and if you don't know who they are, they are a company that sell custom toe pads. And when I say custom, I mean they provide you with the materials to make custom toe pads that are molded to the shape of your toes so that they prevent blisters and bruised toenails and all of that. Since purchasing these toe pads in 2018, I haven't gotten a blister or a bruised toenail since, <laughs> which is crazy. No, this video is not sponsored by Perfect Fit Point. They don't even know that I'm making this video. They didn't even ask me to make this video. I just wanted to make a video dedicated to this because I truly believe in their company and they have truly saved my life. Today I will be featuring their new packaging. Um, this is my free PR, as you would call it, that I get as an ambassador, but I thought why not show it off in this video. So yes, without further ado, let's get into this video. So the point shoes that I wear are Gainer Mendens. These are arguably the best point shoes on the planet, in my humble opinion. I love my Gainer Mendens. People think that they are cheater shoes, but I can tell you that I work just as hard as any other girl in the room. Before Gainer Mendens, I was in my block split sole point shoes. Um, I absolutely loved those shoes, but they just died way too quickly and they were just really expensive. So I decided to switch to Gainer Mendens because they last me forever and I will show you guys. These are my two current pairs of point shoes. This pair is the pair that I'm dancing in right now and this pair is pretty much dead for me. Gendermans don't really die for me, but here you can see the box is starting to come apart and the satin is fraying and whenever I dance in this pair of shoes, um, the shank is really soft now just because I've been dancing in them for so long, so I just don't feel that much support anymore, so that's why this pair is considered dead for me. But anyways, believe it or not guys, these pairs of point shoes are a year old. Yes, I've been dancing in these point shoes for a year now. This is so incredibly rare for point shoes. And if you are not a dancer and you don't know, point shoes typically last about three days to maybe two weeks or a month at the most. But having point shoes for a whole year, that is considered ancient and extremely rare. So I'm very fortunate um, that my point shoes last me forever. It saves me a lot of money. Anyways, here is my new pair. Um, they are nice and shiny. I've already sewn one. Um, I needed a bit of practice sewing since I don't really sew point shoes that often. This is my new and shiny pair. So yes, above me I will flash my specific customizations that I have to my Gainer Mendens if you're interested in knowing. So yeah, let's get into sewing these babies. So I have my needle and thread over here and this is the thread that I use. I use the Bunhead Stitch Kit. Highly recommend. I've been using this ever since I started point six or seven years ago. The thread is really nice and very sturdy and I've never had a problem with the ribbon breaking on me. Okay, so first I'm going to sew the ribbons of my point shoes. I just take the ribbons off um, dead point shoes. So I'll fold the ends of my ribbon like this into a little box and then where I sew my ribbons I'll turn the point shoe inside out right where this seam is that's kind of where your arch hits so I will sew the ribbon right next to that seam. So what I do is sew the ribbon in a box form. Um, I do this so I can pull the as much of the point shoe as I can so it can hug my arch. So what I will do is I'll poke the needle through and I put it all the way through the casing so it comes out on the outside. Gainer Mendens don't really have an inner lining, so I just poke it through on the outside just because it's easier. So now that the thread is on the outside, I'll poke it back through the satin 
just going back and forth through the casing. So again, I'll go through the ribbon all the way through the casing, then push it back through the satin. So I'm going to do that all the way around in a box shape. Okay, so I'm about halfway done with my little box and I just wanted to show you guys just so I could make myself clear if I didn't make sense earlier. But see, I'm just making a little box of stitches just going back and forth. Um, through the casing and the ribbon. Here is the inside so you guys can see. Yes, the stitches do show on the outside, but it's just what's easiest for me sewing. I feel like the thread is pretty close to the color of the point shoot, so I feel like the audience won't really notice it that much. Not like I'm getting on a stage anytime soon because of Miss Rona. I'm going to finish the box. Okay, so I have finished the box and now it's time to secure the knot. So what I'm gonna do is turn the point shoe inside out. And to finish off the stitches, all I'm gonna do is poke the needle through. I'm just gonna poke it through this little piece of fabric right here. And then before you pull the needle all the way through, um, put the thread over the needle and then pull it all the way through. I always make like three to four knots just because my point shoes last me a very long time. So I need the stitching job to last a long time. All right, so I just made my last stitch. I'm gonna pull it a little extra just to make sure the knots are tight and so they don't come undone. And then I'm going to cut the thread right there. And that is one ribbon done. And obviously I will have another ribbon sewn on the other side of my shoe. So the next thing to do is to sew on the elastic. This is a very important part. This is what actually keeps your shoe on your foot. The ribbons just help accentuate your arch. So what I'm gonna do is put on the point shoe and then I'm going to measure the elastic by how much I need, so about this much. I'm too lazy to actually measure it, so I'm gonna cut it right here. Oh, by the way, this is the Gaynor Minden Invisible Elastic. This is actually my first time using it. I usually use um, the traditional like solid opaque elastic, but I decided to try this for a change. Okay, so to sew my elastics, I will fold my um, elastics into like a little box similar to how I did the ribbons. Um, for the invisible elastic, there's like kind of a flat side and then the other side is ribbed. So make sure the flat side is against your ankle so it doesn't rub your skin. And then to sew them, I'll turn the heel of the point shoe inside out. And then from this back seam right here, I'll measure a thumb width away. Um, from that seam and then I'll sew my elastic right there. So see that's a thumb width away. I don't know why I've always measured with my thumbs. I've just always done that. So instead of doing a box like I did with the ribbon, I'm just going to do a straight line against the drawstring case. So I do the same stitching. I go all the way through so I'll poke my needle, put it all the way through the satin, and then I make sure to stay close to this like drawstring seam, but not actually on the drawstring seam so I don't interfere with the drawstring. So then I will poke it back through right under that seam. I hope you guys can see. So that is one little stitch. I just keep it close to the drawstring case so the stitches aren't as noticeable. Um, so yeah, I will do that in a straight line all the way across. So I've gone all the way across, but now what I'm actually gonna do is reverse the stitch and go back over to where there's little spaces between the stitches. I just do this because um, I have a twisting problem with my point shoes, so I need my elastic to be extra tight and secure, so I just go back with another line of stitches to make it extra secure. So I'm about halfway through going back, but as you guys can see, I'm just filling in um, where there's little spaces in between the stitches. Okay, so I finished reversing the stitches and now it is time to secure the knot. So I do it the same way I do the ribbons. So I poke it through this little piece of fabric and then 
I put the thread over and then I pull and I'll do this three times. So that is one side of the elastic done. Um, off camera, I'm just going to sew the other ribbon on. Um, on the other side, I do the same thing. I sew it right next to the seam. And then I'm going to sew the other side of the elastic on. I make the box again, and then I sew it thumb width away from the seam, like that. So it's actually a couple days after I filmed the sewing part of this video. Um, when I was sewing my point shoes, it was a gloomy day and I lost sunlight to film, but anyways, here are the finished point shoes. Here is the point shoe that I sewed in the last few clips. As you can see, I got both of the ribbons on and I got the other side of the elastic on. <laughs> As you can see, my um, elastic is very short because I have a twisting problem in my point shoes. Every point shoe that I've tried, my shoes twist. Anyway, so the next step is to break in these point shoes and to make some new inserts. Um, I don't do this every time I get new point shoes, obviously, but I haven't had new inserts in about a year and I think it's time for me to get a new pair of Perfect Fit Point inserts. Okay, so right now I'm about to break in these point shoes, but one thing that I do to them, on the inside of Gainer Mendens, you can see there's a little padding in the tip. The padding in the tip really hurts for me. Um, my second toe is longer than my first toe, so it puts a lot of pressure on my second toe for some reason and it hurts really bad. So I rip that out. So yeah, that's just what works for me and I just go ahead and rip out the tip. I also did this when I had my block point shoes before. The, the padding in the tip, it really irritates my second toe and it makes it really painful to dance, so. I don't like padding in my point shoes like that, so I just take it out. <laughs> so yeah, I just stick my fingers in there and then I just pick at it until I can get the whole thing out. There you go. This is the little padding in the tip. Goes in the trash. <laughs> okay, so just to break them in, I can just kind of roll through my feet. I'm sorry if I don't have the best feet. Oop, there's a crack. I wear the softest shank in Gainer Mendens. So it is pretty easy to roll through. If I get anything harder, um, my feet aren't really that strong so I can't get over my box. And then one of the hardest things for me to break in is my dummy point. So I just kind of walk in my dummy point just to break it in. Now, it hurts so bad if the dummy point isn't broken in, like you can't like run or you can't like do transition steps because the dummy point isn't broken in, so it's really important that you break in that dummy point. But mostly what breaks them in is class, so I have to do a whole class in these shoes to actually like fully break them in. Also, to break in the shank, I like to do this. You just drop down, sit on your ankles. It gives you, I also do this right before I go into a rehearsal to stretch this, it helps me get over my box. And it also breaks in your shank, so. Yep, Ugh, that hurts so much. Okay, so now that I've like walked in them and rolled through them a bit, I'm going to fix the drawstring now. So basically I kept them loose just so that they would go to exactly how much my foot needed. And so I wouldn't make the drawstring too tight. I'm just going to tie, double tie it right here and just kinda, I'm not gonna pull it any more than it already is. Um, just because I had that rubbing problem, so I'm just going to tie the knot like right where it is I'm not gonna pull it. So I double knotted it and now I'm going to Cut it. I'm going to leave about this much I'm just gonna tuck them in so here Are the new gainers. They feel so nice. Oh, I haven't had new point shoes in so long. Okay, now it is time to mold some new toe pads. I'm so, so excited. I haven't had a new pair of toe pads in a very long time. So here is my little PR package. This is Perfect Fit's new packaging and it is so pretty. Here is a closer look at the beautiful packaging. 
some cute sayings and this is their whole motto um our feet are as different as our faces so yeah let's open this i've already opened this but i haven't actually used the contents inside so <laughs> here is a little letter that kelly the founder of perfect fit wrote to me um, she wrote a letter to each of the ambassadors which is so cute but here is the actual kit this is the um twin kit so it comes with two pairs of toe pads they also have a single kit where it just comes with one so it'll only give you half of this package okay so now it is time to mold these toe pads so you're going to take one of each one part a and one part b part a is the white container part b is the blue container so once you take them out of their containers you're going to mix them together. Now, when you mix them together, a chemical reaction happens and over time the material will harden to mold to your feet. It won't harden that fast, but just don't take too much time or else you will run out of time. So when mixing them together, it should only take about 30 seconds. So I have my phone right here. Start, okay, mix. I went over time. Okay, so now you're going to spread the material across your toes. Make sure it's pretty even, but you can also put more material where you know your pressure points are. So for me, it's my big toe and right here on the outside. So just put it on top and on the tips of your toes. You don't have to put it on the bottom of your toes because when you mold them, it will naturally go where it needs to go. Next you put on the casing like that and after your plastic baggie and then your point shoe so basically just to mold them just roll through your, all of your positions go through demi Point. And because my second toe is longer than my first toe, I try not to put too much pressure. Um, I'll go on point, but I won't put my weight fully on this leg, um, just because it might mold incorrectly if I put too much pressure. It's because of my foot shape. As you can see, the material is flowing out of my point shoe. That's what you want to happen. Make sure you're using proper technique when you're doing this so they mold correctly. And then to check if it's done, you can check the material that flowed outside. So it's getting a little harder, but not quite done yet. Okay, the material is hard now, which means that the toe pads are done molding, so you can take off your point shoe. Oof. And there you go, your own custom toe pads. They look so cool. See, everyone's will look different. Um, it all depends on where your pressure points are. Okay, so now after molding, you'll have something that looks like this. So with this, you're going to cut off any excess um, material and any excess fabric. Okay guys, my new inserts are done. They're so pretty and new. Okay guys, here is the final product. Oh my gosh, they feel so good. My point shoes, my current point shoes are a year old. 
so I really needed a new pair and uh, I just feel so good. how I prep my point shoes. <laughs> Since I dance 30 plus hours a week, it's really important that my point shoes feel like skin to me and feel like that they are a part of me. So I'm really happy to show you guys how I make my point shoes that way. If you're interested in trying Perfect Fit Point for yourselves, head over to perfectfitpoint.com. Again, this video is not sponsored. They did not ask me or pay me to do this video. I made this video just because I genuinely love the product and it has saved me and my dancing. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Hit the like button if you want to support me. Leave a comment down below because I love talking to you guys and I'll see you all later. I need more sleep. So don't test me. I don't want things to get messy. Yeah, drop down a little ass empty. Yeah, like I just wanna hit delete. Come and test me. Hit you with that smite.